Hello, sir. How'd you get in my flat? I've got an urgent letter for you. It better be. Unit HQ. What's that? Words. Damn. That's what I was afraid of. To Mr. Jack Reeves, you have been requested by Redacted. Oh, I love that guy. To our secret headquarters address below. See, I'd never have thought of that. This guy's good. Please come immediately. Tim's fractals are only getting worse. Oh, I love that guy. Blah, 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 unimaginable stakes. Blah, 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 vortex collapsing. Blah, 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 the universe is being torn apart. The universe? But I live there. You better go. Get out of my flat. Okay. Okay, then you to HQ. I'm on the way. Oh, I've also got this package for you. Right. Come here! <laughs> Welcome to Doctor Who, the community show, a special episode where I've been invited to Unit HQ under mysterious circumstances as well. I don't know why. It's something to do with Tim's fractals splintering or something, I don't know. But why don't we head inside and find out for ourselves, shall we? Here we go. Hopefully it's not dangerous. I'm terrible with danger, let me tell you. <laughs> Especially if it's aliens. Terrified of aliens. Number one fear? Aliens. So, it's probably not that though. <laughs> That'd be ridiculous. Life bombs detected! Yo, man, located! Exterminate! 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 Oh yeah, we're doing Time Fracture, baby. Doctor Who Time Fracture is an immersive theatre experience over in London. Because, I guess I asked nicely, I was allowed access to Doctor Who Time Fracture to interview six cast members. But I got there really early, so without asking, I filmed the bits you just saw. <laughs> As you can tell, this episode of the community show will be a lot different than usual. There won't be any sort of main promotions, that, that won't be going away, that is something that will always stay of course, but this one solely focused on promoting Time Fracture. You might think it doesn't really count as community work, but after talking to the cast and some of the crew, yeah, no, they're all big nerds. To give you an idea, one of the prop makers, James Sutton, is someone I had already interviewed last year in person. Play a clip of that. And the art director did a solid job on everything because right. like, he really cared about getting things right mm. and taking the time to get things right. So like, I was very appreciative of all the hard work he was putting into the project as a whole. Ryan O'Connor. <laughs> he, he is just art director. He is, he is that props guy on Instagram. He is brilliant. As I said, there are six interview guests this time, which is unheard of for the show. <laughs> Not all at once though, thank Christ. Jess Elton, Simon Victor, Samuel Hunt, Bethany Blake, Angus Dunnican and James Lawrence all were kind enough to come in early and chat to me about Time Fracture and other nerd stuff. It was wicked. Even after editing down the raw over an hour uh, footage, I managed to get it down to only 23 minutes. So this time, instead of having a dedicated segment to the cut down interview, I have actually cut up the interview into, I believe, five different sections and will be sprinkling it throughout the show. Let's get this show on the road with the first part of the interview segments. I am here with Jess, Simon, Hello. Sam Hunt, Hello. Samuel Hunt, Samuel Sorry. Hunt, Be Sorry. Bethany, Hi. Angus, and Simon, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and James. <laughs> First of all, immersive theatre. Mm -hmm. How would you best describe immersive theatre? I think people have been to immersive theatre without realising it. I think um, for a lot of people, their first interaction with immersive theatre is something like 
Disneyland. That is a world that is tactile, that is a world that you can play in, that's a world where you can interact with people. There can be immersive theatre that is, like this is, is very narrative structured and you are following a clear thread that might splinter off into a few different directions. Um, or there's other kind of immersive theatre which is essentially like a like sandbox immersive, which is I think what Secret Cinema in particular are very good at. So where you would you rock up and you would explore a world and there might be missions within that world for you to do, but really it's like GTA, basically, but with less <laughs> violence and cars. At heart, that is what immersive theatre is. It is uh, an environment where you enter a storyline, you literally cross over a threshold, you're in the world, you're interacted with, the world around you completely changes and is completely different to the outside world. Before you came here, was there any sort of prior knowledge or experience with immersive theatre? Yes! I've done various things with different immersive theatre companies. I've worked with Secret Cinema quite a few times. So I knew the director, Tom Maller, and the writer, Dan from a previous immersive job that I'd done which was the immersive Great Gatsby. Back in the summer of 2020 they needed someone to do the unit field logs which were on the Doctor Who YouTube channel which essentially mm. kind of functioned as a bit of a, a teaser trailer for the show and they said will you will you play a unit scientist in the trailer and I sort of extorted the part from them there I said yes I will do it if it means I can be in the actual show ah. uh, and they just sort of said well that's brilliant. that's one less actor we have to worry about auditions so yeah <laughs> extortion was essentially how I managed that to get my way through here. Nice. Unlike James I'm here on merit. Ah. <laughs> I play William Shakespeare and I had a little bit of Shakespeare experience and had quite a bit of improv experience and I think they chose me based upon the fact that I could do both those things at the same time. That helps. <laughs> and that was basically it I think it was just that was the only reason they, they they cast me. Is Shakespeare, can I say Shakespeare? Oh, all the lights are starting to turn on. At drama school I did acting but I did contemporary theatre so it was a lot about devising work, creating new work uh, and creating work in very unusual spaces and since then I've worked on numerous immersive shows, uh, everything from repeated sequences of like five minutes over and over again for three hours straight to big pieces such as Doctor Time Fracture. I did Secret Cinema Stranger Things which was really fun. Again very chaotic and sci-fi because I'm a big sci-fi fan. And I also use to work with a circus company and we do immersive stuff with the circus as well. And they're called Shivari Circus, circus and they're very cool. Who did you play in Stranger Things? I was Joyce Byers. Oh, that's yeah. a good role. She's great. She's bonkers, but I love it. Much less experience uh, in immersive theatre. I came on late to uh, Secret Cinema's Shawshank Redemption, did a, did, a, did a bit on that, but otherwise this is my first kind of real shindig in uh, immersive theatre. What a first go it is. I know, I'm, I feel very lucky. For me, a huge challenge to kind of just jump in and, and, and at times just kind of just improvise content that you don't we haven't even necessarily agreed on yet we have is it even in world the fear of getting things wrong and, yeah. but obviously that is the also the joy of it in the process and you'll probably think the same Jess is that there's a lot of failing but it's kind of failing and enjoying it because if, 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 if you find out what doesn't work then you soon find out what does work and then yeah. you're like you're on to a winner. Done The Great Gatsby for a year and a half, The Wolf of Wall Street, so it's been a, a large part of my career over the last 10 years doing immersive theatre. Well, no wonder you're here. And on those lines, how did you become part of the Time Fractured family? Well, I just auditioned and had a, had a lovely audition and it's very rare that you have a lovely audition. Give us your best Shakespeare speech and you're like, <laughs> finally sir! <laughs> ah, you don't know what you've unleashed! <laughs> exactly. So I auditioned for it originally in the October. It's a workshop, so you're like you're improvising, you're given a scenario. I think we were given a plant. This plant wasn't a plant, it was something else, and we had to interact with it, and we had an audience member with us, and the whole scene had to revolve around this plant, which was wonderful. You had to play sort of like a doctor-esque character or a, a unit scientist or a, a unit soldier or stuff like that, and it's just about being in the moment and just bringing the world alive. I wasn't an original member of the Time Fracture family. The rest of the cast did all the rehearsal period, uh, and they were starting their previews and everything like that. I think they got two weeks into previews. My agent called me up on a Friday night around six o'clock and they were like, hi, they want your measurements right now. I was like, okay, so I'm running around at nine o'clock at night whilst doing a bar shift at the same time. Oh God. Trying to find a measuring tape, measuring myself in a stock room and everything like that. The next two days, did two show watches, a costume fitting, 45 minutes rehearsal and then went straight on stage. I've got a tight schedule, I need to stay put on this loud chair on the loudest floor I've ever heard in it's my so life. It's so loud! Quite a loud one. Yeah. Yeah. Come on everybody, we need to get through the fracture! <laughs> uh, I came along, had, had an audition. I auditioned originally for uh, the Leonardo da Vinci track. Spoilers. Spoilers. It's in the is advertising, that, is that, I mean, it's, it's fine. It's on, it's on the poster, right? Didn't have a great audition, personally, I really? didn't think. We actually ran in here and they were like, right, you're in charge of this facility. Go like improvise. Oh, did you have the audition here? Yeah, so the, wow. uh, the auditions were in uh, that 
area there, which begins with G, that we can't say. Um, they were like, no one's seen this, come in here, quickly. And I was like, okay, uh, just, uh, you're in charge, go. And I just had to sort of improvise that this was my Ooh. workplace and I was in charge. Two days later, they were like, all right, we'll have him. <laughs> Uh, we do an alright job. You can tell. You can say. Well, it's fine. But um, it's fine. <laughs> the show is fine. Oh, it was, you know, see this fine it's, show. It's all right. It's all right. I have notes. No. Uh, <laughs> I want to know more about chat, Sam shouting yeah. at the plant. I did an audition before it started. So I feel like Simon says I've been here since the beginning. Not to brag. Not to brag. <laughs> um, the audition that I did again was terrible, only because I did it at my place of work at the time, which was during lockdown, and it was in a rum company's like storage area. <laughs> it was awful. It was very strange, and it was over Zoom and just running around like this packing area with just bottles of booze <laughs> everywhere. It was it was like something out of an episode, to be fair, because yeah. it was just so strange. And the Doctor decor. Who in the rum. I actually auditioned for. A, an alien, yeah. and I'm not going to say which Spoilers. one here, <laughs> and a Time Lord guide, and I didn't get that, I got something completely different. <laughs> very quick proviso, they, they don't only employ terrible actors. Hello, I'm Time Fractures resident casting director. You have me to thank for, well, as you've seen on social media, some of the Doctor Who characters returning for some cameo appearances, such as and But you'd be surprised to know how many Doctor Who actors were considered to return, many of which were actually auditioned. And you may be shouting at your screen, how bloody dare you, mister, not include every single Doctor in some description, you b <coughs> Sorry. I know it would have been amazing to see all the Doctors on screen at some point. It would have been... Well, God tier, if I had to put a label on it. But hopefully through this compilation of audition videos, you can see why we didn't use them. Hello, all of you. Pleasure to see you, Matt Smith, at your service, ready for this audition. Oh, look at you all huddled together behind the camera like penguins. Oh. Love a penguin. You know, the last time I saw a penguin uh, was in London Matt. Zoo. Uh, <laughs> we were loving the energy over here, but please stick to the script. Sorry, right, yes, I do go on a bit, don't I? You're not wrong. Oh, you reminds me of that time I was filming Victory of the Daleks and... I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry, but what is this script? I would never say any of this stuff. David, you have said that about literally every line so far. Well, maybe get some writers who actually know their ten, eh? You know, I gotta go. I'm in about 50 other projects at the minute anyway. See you in the 60th. Ah. No. So excited for this, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. The fans are going to go bananas. Okay, everyone, that's lunch. What now? Sorry, Paul, maybe another time, eh? Um... Mr. McCoy, could you just say the lines, please? <clears throat> time for... this terrific day where Nick Briggs decided to take all his clothes off and run around screaming help I'm a darling oh here's a fun spoiler for you can't tell anyone this I'm gonna be playing the curator next year my own version of the curator as well as about 50 million different versions of this so uh, yeah quite exciting isn't it don't tell anyone though highly classified Colin <laughs> this this is being recorded and Nick Briggs is actually heavily involved in the show. Ha! He's gonna kill me! Before we get started, uh, tell me, did you add that cricket segment like I requested? We couldn't fit that in, I'm afraid. It's a tight space. <sighs> oh, darn. Oh, very well. As long as you removed that character that dresses like a fake me, then <laughs> we're all good. <laughs> uh... I quit. It's disrespectful is what it is! <laughs> Mr. Baker, what are you laughing at? 
Tim's fractals. <laughs> Jack is a very funny man. <laughs> and now, the moment you've all been waiting for. I said no to the 60th, I said no to Big Finish, but this, this I said yes to. So prepare for my 16 hour money. <laughs> Who let Peter in? Call security. How does he keep getting in? Uh, hi. <laughs> I'm Jack Reeves, so I'd like to audition. Get out. Okay. That's enough about me though, how are all of you? Oh, I'm alone. I best let myself out then. Hello. 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 Out of the shadows. Come on in. <laughs> it was a cast member's birthday party, so exuberance mm. was had a little bit. I'm going to change the subject a little bit about the characters, because you can play multiple characters. I didn't realise this until I think I saw your Instagram story. Mm -hmm. Because the show is broken into what we call waves, mm. so waves of audience, in order, each space can hold up to around about 150 people. In order to have multiple car audiences over a night, we have three waves in a show. So if you're doing two shows in a day, like a matinee and an evening show, that would mean six waves waves of audience. Yeah. So you're doing the same uh, character six times, which can slightly turn you a bit mad. Each person has two characters, mm. and we swap each show, so it keeps it really fresh. Mm. My primary two are uh, Shakespeare, and at the other end of the scale, a Cyberman. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> and I sometimes also uh, understudy uh, one of James's roles. Ooh. Which is Captain Stephen Davis. For those of you out there who are fans of the series Torchwood, Captain Stephen Davis is in the series two episode uh, Exit Wounds. You don't actually see him, but it's that era of Torchwood, that sort of late 1800s with Emily and so forth. You meet Captain Stephen Davis kind of after his office has been split in two by the time fracture and it's been partially subsumed by, shall we say, a more familiar iteration of Torchwood. And then there's also uh, Brian the Ood. There's a lot of fans of Brian the Ood. Tremendous fun. More and more people start to become aware of Brian, actually having people actively seek you out and go, are you Brian? Yes. Um, you should well. really confuse him one day and go, no. no not I. No. You're, um, you're thinking of a different Oud in the tux. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you might have to beep these for spoilers, but I also cover <laughs> and in the next contract I shall cover Davros as well. Ooh. Oh. I think I'm okay for Davros, but definitely can't say the other okay. one. <laughs> I think you were that character when I came here, because I've only been here the once and it was a few weeks ago, but you might have been here. It's very possible. I, I am tonight as well, so yes, ah. you'll, you, you shall definitely see me. Yes. Sam Hunt has, uh, since I've been recording with him, convinced me to come tonight as well. So that, he's, he's g extorted me! So I play uh, Queen Elizabeth and a Time Lord guide. You are truly the master of the multi-rolling ones. <laughs> I, for, for most of us, we just play two and we alternate each night between them. For multi-multi-rollers multi like multi yourself. So I'm Swing, so um, I do have two sort of like main roles, which is George, who's a roaming scientist in the unit, or I play a Cyberman, but I cover, so I'm an understudy for another... Hang on. Let's go through happen. this. <laughs> Yates, Sullivan, Brian, Time of Guide 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Daleks. Yeah. About to take on the... Spoilers. Spoilers. The Gallifrey Guide. Yeah, so we're around 11 characters in total. <laughs> Good lord! As you were saying, you're so experienced and you're amazing. As he was just telling me all about this, you see. He's so modest, isn't he? He, he just is. So, what characters do you play? Just look, think about what, who's on the poster first. Think about who's on the poster. <laughs> so you can so get you, away you, with saying. Yeah, they're very good. So, on the poster, you'll see a unit scientist wearing uh, a lab coat. I play Dr. Courtney, who is the chief scientific officer of this unit facility. My other character, I think I'm allowed to say... Uh, I'll bleep think? it out if, if, uh, if I play not. a Time Lord Cardinal. The Time Lords are in this? No, I knew that. Their name is Tepesh. Ooh. Or Tepesh, Tepesh. depending on who's playing the role. <laughs> but my one is Tepesh. The Time Lords have different accents. I don't know. Yeah, like, if you're from Arcadia, you yeah, sound like you're from the North. I also play a Time Lord. Ooh. Or a Time Lady. She's evil. It's great. It's really fun. She's a little snake. Is it better to play evil than to play good? Um, yes, I well, think That's so. a quick yes. So out of those characters, what are the funnest to play? Oh. I think Queen Elizabeth might just take it ever so slightly. People are brought to you and you're sort of, do this, do that, <laughs> entertain me. Because um, it really is a mixture of like, poised regal queen and then queenie. 
So it's sort oh, of like yeah. bloodthirst. Yay, I like that. And it's really <laughs> quite. Oh, is there a bit too. of Blackadder Queenie? Oh, very much Queenie. Oh, it's yes. the Blackadder Queenie. So it's like, ta da! I certainly got the most enjoyment out of Captain Stephen Davis when I was first doing it. But then the more I've done Brian, the more kind of stuff I have managed to figure out and how to kind of squeeze the most fun from every kind of moment of the track. I, I go between them. Sometimes it just depends the, what mood you're in. It sounds really strange, but you could go in and have an audience member that is just so ready to have fun and listen to you, but then then argue or, or, or agree or whatever it is. And, and whatever, you know, I love that. I really love it when you see an audience just understand what you're giving them and, and, and enjoy it. I am the same as Simon, to be fair, I flit, but it really depends because I get different things from playing my different roles. Mm. My one that she shall not be named. Not her name, I can say, I can give a name. Her name is S. Hilda. She has the power of foresight. Mm -hmm. She is the reason, or what part of the reason, why the Time Lords exist and they have regeneration powers. I'll say that. It's quite banter. There's a lot of banter, and I like that. She's got her own little secret little area that she, you can only be, you have to be invited into. Well, we'll try and find it. When you're next here, and you will be, go find it. I can't choose one out of no. the case, uh, <laughs> Well, I'm just going to slap a picture on screen and that's your favourite, I've decided. Thank you very much. It's going to be the Queen. <laughs> Everyone's trying to get in Queenie's dress. Like, the amount of people are buying for that, they're like, one day, I'll... I'll like. Well, before I leave, <laughs> do you have a favourite of your characters to play? I mean, <laughs> only one of them speaks. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> But um, yeah, obviously Shakespeare is my favourite. But it is fun being the side men. Just, just um, is it based on the reaction of everyone else? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, because when you walk out there and people are and you and you and people run run fleeing from you, <laughs> it's really nice. And then small children with sonic screwdrivers try and stop you, and then you can kind of make their day by being stopped by oh, them. Oh, that's like, no, no. Yes. One of the most fun things on this show has been. So I used to also operate a, a Dalek um, at one point as well. Actually, sit in it and. Pilot it. I don't think that's a spoiler. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there is nothing more fun than than when you're in a Dalek and an audience member doesn't think they have been seen, and then you just swivel the ice door oh. around yeah. and just dosh. The number yeah, of scream, yeah, just delightful fun because I'm a sadist. When I was here last, the Dalek came out and I was fully looking the complete wrong way. It was a case in like a horror movie where someone was like tapping me on the shoulder, like, look around, look around. I was like, what? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, it's good to see you. Thank you for joining me for this little um, get chat, a little catch up post operation time fracture. And thank you again for, well, you know, saving the world. It was very kind of you. Twice already as well. <laughs> did it twice. Oh my goodness. Well, yeah. I'll make sure you get knighted for that one. Fantastic. We're all about improving ourselves. We hate to be stuck in the past. As it were. <laughs> make sure that it's all gone according to plan. It, nothing's gone wrong. You haven't grown any extra appendages since your visit, I hope. Well, not to my knowledge, no. I've kept a perfectly good eye on myself, and frankly, everything seems to be perfectly fine. Oh, that's excellent. I'll just jot that down. Uh, we understand that you went through uh, the Operation Time Fracture. Thank you very much for doing that. So we're just doing this little brief just to explain uh, from you to me what happened. Quite low on the, on the scale. Unfortunately, I missed it, but I've been tasked uh, by my superiors to get, get some information from uh, you lot in the field. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. It's uh, always good to uh, talk to such an esteemed unit scientist. Oh, well, thank yourself. you very much. Do you mind uh, stating your name for the record, please? Gary the Word. Is that uh, first, middle and surname? Hi, I'm Abby. <laughs> <laughs> Rory Stock. Rory Stock. And is that with three Ks? No, just the one. Just, just, just the, one. the one. Fantastic. Rory Stock. Samuel Davis. Davies, not Davies. Not to be confused with Russell T, who's a, I don't know, just, you know, I mean, you wouldn't know who Russell T is. No, of the course. name no, escapes no. me. James Wald. Fantastic. And is that with five L's on the end there? You can make it five L's if you want. We're unit. We can do whatever we want. You were a guest, but I go by Rasslin Productions. Oh, you have a code name. That's quite interesting. Mm. Okay, I'll jot that down. Dom. Is that Dom. Q S? T, am I, am I getting that right? Yeah, you're getting that exactly right. I do want to hook up the job, son. Well, that's rude. Anyhow. As uh, you are aware, you went through the fracture. It was very exciting. We couldn't have done it without you, of course. 
you know, it's a HR thing. Sometimes our unit scientists do get a bit crazy. <laughs> Were you treated well during your time here at Unit HQ? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, despite, you know, all the hassle that was going on, they did their best to explain everything. Staff review, it's all thumbs up here. A very stressed collection of people I found. Yeah. Uh, I understand the circumstances. They were running back and forth. My first interaction there, the second where you're at, where I was allowed off the leash and allowed to talk to some of your fine scientists. It was this actress and well, actress. Actress. But the second oh. like, I spoke to her, she turned around like I'd actually disturbed her from her actual work. And it was just that was it. That was the second I was like, right, okay, I've got to take this seriously. Some people just think it's a joke. Uh, it, it's yeah. quite rude. And they made sure to accompany me whenever I was on my own, send me in directions to which did. Uh, linked to interesting story points. I feel sorry for one person who I was working with because they're little, they had to wrap up this giant list of names and uh, the, the scientist was not kind to him. But otherwise, all, all the scientists, all the unit personnel were very kind and considerate. No chance you got his name with the list of names? I can't, I can't remember. It was quite a while ago. That's all right. Uh, it's a shame because we would have reprimanded him, maybe wiped his memory, sent him to Hull or something. Well, everyone was very attentive. Everyone was just going around, escorting all the civilians and making sure nobody touched something that they didn't and caused the uh, unfortunate obliteration of the world. It's good to hear. We've, we've had mostly positive, except for the ones who have uh, well, been lost, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> and if you talk about that, um, you will be, um, well, that doesn't matter. It's, it's in the fine print. You understand? I'm sure they're all fine. Through the fracture itself, obviously we had to stay here at Unit HQ. We, we have, uh, you know, lives to get back to. You're all uh, yep. liability. <coughs> you were very brave. Was there any sort of unique uh, antics related to you specifically? Any certain creatures coming up to you at all? A lot was going on, and I have to say, don't blink. Oh, oh, I, I see. I yeah. see what you're doing there. That's very good. I'll jot that down. This kind of surreal version of the past where I met loads of different historical figures like Elizabeth, um, Queen Elizabeth, of course. Which and one? I, Queen Elizabeth I. The first. The yeah. first? I spent most of my time actually talking to William Shakespeare. Yes, William the, Sh the William Shakespeare? <laughs> Oh my yeah. goodness, how exciting, how was he? A bit depressed, sadly. No. He... I'd love to talk about what's inside the time fracture, but as you can see here, I've got a legal document from your family. Oh, you people. received that? Oh, that's excellent. I've got that. And it says I can't... I... My family will be informed that I was fed to the Loch Ness if I share anything from inside. I was aware of a pig man, and I was very eager to meet him. Oh, yes, yes. We, we, we've heard stories of this pig man. He does seem to be, um, what, what's the word that other scientists use? Oh, that's right. Mad Bants. I found him a very threatening presence, yeah. I, I didn't trust him one bit. Daleks. I went into this sort of a dark chamber, this dark room, and this guy named uh, Dave was in there. This uh, Dave. very... Dave. Uh, I believe he goes by Davros nowadays. Oh, Absolutely my goodness. Lovely. Uh, <laughs> And, lovely. Uh, Davros was oh, lovely. Well, well, we had a wonderful conversation. Pig man. I've heard about this pig man. Bit of a swindler from what I hear. He offered me 50% and I never got it. Well, that is just ridiculous. We will have to send someone through to him to get you and that I, 50%. I, I, understandably, he had a bit of an accident, but yeah. still. So I ended up coming face to face with the legend that is the creator of the Daleks, oh. Davros himself. Oh my goodness, that's excellent. It was certainly not something I expected when I woke up that morning and suddenly having the fate of Earth and Scarrow and the Dalek race being entrusted upon me. We all got taken to this other world and saw this weird marketplace that had loads of different aliens, some weird robot postman looking Thing. I almost died. Uh, well, can I can I sue for that? Um, I'll I'll speak to to HR. Rory, wipe mind. He knows too much about the legal system. <laughs> Brian the Oot, who, who's another player. Brian the Oot. Now we've heard about this Brian the Oot. He's quite the character. Yes. What was he up to? We then? love a bit of Brian. Oh yeah. He was on a mission. Was he? What kind of mission? Mm, to find somebody. Very good, keeping spoilers free. I like mm. that, very nice, very nice. Because <laughs> if this footage gets out, that's me sacked. Okay, you met Brian, that's good. Is yes. there any other characters you, you bumped into? 
Ah, uh, Leonardo. Leonardo. Oh, oh, the Ninja Turtle. Oh yes, the Ninja Turtle. Fantastic. Yep, the Ninja Turtle's there. Good, good excellent. With his bandana. <laughs> <laughs> He handed me a prop, which I won't say too much about. I almost accidentally stole it. <laughs> oh, well, that's not ideal. Uh, well, we need to keep that in the black archive, sir. I had to give it to the people at the desk after the experience. If you don't worry, their minds have been wiped of that interaction, yes. so we won't of be course. worrying about that getting out. Most of all, I just I wish I'd gotten more time with him. Uh, I've tried to follow him around as much as possible, but his uh, whatever he was doing on the side was very tangential and like not related to the core story. Try Trying to find a Kablam package. Um, oh, Kablam, <laughs> yes, I believe he was Kablam. in the trailer, so I'm, I think we're safe for that one. Trailer, <laughs> Tra hmm. Oh, I've got one final question for you, Mr. Mr. Dom, and um, I'm afraid to say you've been bamboozled. I'm not a unit HQ. I was not oh, a unit no. scientist at all. You've been <laughs> bloody bamboozled. <laughs> We've met so what? many times. You absolute buffoon. Well, I'm actually Osgood. Oh no. Yeah. As this is a Time Fracture special that I've been working with the lovely people at Time Fracture, it's entirely possible that some of the cast or crew or the creators are watching as we speak. So is there anything you'd like to say to them? I just wanted to say that Time Fracture is the best experience I have had in my life, probably since, well, the Doctor Who experience. I fully intend on going as many more times as I can until the run ends, basically. Very jealous of all your jobs. If you ever have any jobs going. <laughs> it was a really, really fun experience. You were really all accommodating and I will be returning soon, which I look forward to as I've been for a very rough year and going to such an experience will be a lot of fun and I can't wait. It is definitely the closest we're ever going to get to being in the actual website without, you know, signing in contracts or something to be part of the production crew. It's definitely got me more interested in immerse theatre. Trying to sound more clever than I actually am. <laughs> I'm a single mum who has high autism and they treated him so well. They interacted really well with him. They understood, like, like, he had his lanyard on, they understood his needs. That's why we're going back, well, so. Yeah. <laughs> Being an actor myself, I can massively respect how difficult improv is on the fly when everything is coming at you, various different people, all these different elements that could go crazily wrong. And yet, everyone seems to just take it in their stride, no matter what, as well as everything in terms of the set design and all the people that have worked on there, whether it be doing to the props, to the lighting, to everything like that, it is just an exemplary job and everyone has put their A game into this experience. I just loved it to pieces. Both times I went, they've been absolutely phenomenal. So well done to everybody. And of course, the story itself, brilliant writing. And as you heard there, Dom hated all of you. Uh, we'll never go again. I just want to say it's been a hell of a time. And I would recommend to everyone who hasn't been there to go there. Because it was a blast and it, you'll have a lot of fun. The Tunnelwood Guides are just phenomenal they are the highlights being able to look in someone's eyes and there's total conviction behind it thank you and that is the end of the mini interview yes i must know in your short interaction with me because I, I sent my cv in i got ghosted but that's fine i'm not bitter welcome to the world of acting no. yeah I'm, yeah <laughs> if there was a character in the show that would be open and i would be best at who do you think that would be the doctor, obviously. Well, I think, I think, Correct. I think you. Would... I mean, I feel you're trying to influence us with I know the, the scientist jacket. Like, I'd say definitely like scientists. Yeah. But you've also got that fun energy of a time lord guide. Yeah. You're like, come with me on an adventure. Doctor Yates, portrait guide. That's your Ooh, casting. Oh, I could see that one. Yeah. yeah. Everyone has to double, so we could go unit scientists. We could also go. I see the beige chucks down the bottom there. Well done. <laughs> and I see the, the quite tannish hairstyle as well. So we have these characters that are called time lord guides, mm -hmm. who are. Time Lords and their job is to guide the audience around and they are in many ways they are like the Doctor. They're not the Doctor. They're not the Doctor. But they're no. they're kind of they like are, the Doctor. That no confused me. <laughs> extremely copyrighted figure of the Doctor. Yeah. If you bought the Doctor on Wish, that's sort of what you... <laughs> exactly, yeah. I reckon with the with the chucks and their hair we are pretty much on the route. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so does it help if I can do the voice? Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh, yes. Everyone can do a bit of tenant, can't they? Like, it's too easy. Your knowledge and uh, love of the universe would lend itself very well to a Time Lord guide. I think you'd do very well in unit with the lab coat already. But yeah, which which scientist though? Ones. You'd be very good in the Black Archive. Oh, as Doctor yes. Shaw. Yeah. As I was really little thinking, bit, like, little bit crazy. A little bit, you know. 
Scatterbrain, maybe? Well, I can do it in the Scottish accent. Can you? That'd be great. That'd be really good. <laughs> I think you'd be great fun in court. Oh. <laughs> well, I basically was in the court last time. Not oh, to, great. Well, that's right. That's to put right. it very bluntly, as you two will know, I was dressed as the Tenth Doctor at the time. There we go. Oh, yes. Yes. She loved it. <laughs> I adore the concept of the Time Lord Guides in Time Fracture. It's such a clever idea to get the Doctor sort of in the show without having to put the Doctor in the show. It's genius. And probably the best part about it is how inclusive it allows the role of the Doctor to be because you can be any gender, any race, it does not matter. You can play a Time Lord Guide. And props to the costume designer for making the costumes for these Time Lord guides Doctor Adjacent, shall we say. It captures the aesthetic, the sort of silhouette of a certain Doctor's incarnation without having to be screen accurate. Bar the Rowan Atkinson Doctor, but I mean, you don't change what's already perfect, here. And because it doesn't go for the screen accurate route, you at home can make your own Time Lord guide outfit really easily. Again, you just sort of need the general shape, the idea of a doctor's outfit. So, here's my little challenge to you. I thought I'd make my own. After being told by the cast that I would make a terrific Time Lord guide, Time Fracture just saying, you have my number. Despite me basically having the costume of every single doctor, I thought I'd make a Time Lord guide variant of, well, I mean, come on. Which doctor do you think I'm gonna go for here? Oh yes! So come on this Time Lord Guide adventure with me as we put together Time Fractures Time Lord Guide of the Tenth Doctor. First things first, the most recognisable part of the Tenth Doctor's outfit is the suit itself. Now you can go for a brown striped suit to be a bit more obvious, but really it can just be a suit. For example, this! Oh, hang on. Uh, uh, there we go. Don't need to be seeing my bare chest. You can go with whatever coloured shirt you want. I kept the blue as, uh, you know, the suit isn't the right colour, so I figured I'd keep something the right colour just to sort of trick the eye. Moving on, I know the Tenth Doctor had a few variants without the tie, but I mean, come on. I thought I'd go with this one here. It's not screen accurate, as said before, but it sort of vaguely resembles what he's worn before. It's kind of like a weird version of the one worn in the 11th hour and end of time. I know he wore it in other episodes, but that's what I most recognize it from personally. So already we can probably tell that I've got a bit of a 10th Doctor thing going on already. Probably the hair helps. <laughs> but again, like if you want to be a 10th Doctor and you're of a different race or gender to me, it still works because it's not the Doctor. It's not the 10th Doctor, it's Time Lord Guide. Moving on to the next thing, James Lawrence, when I was interviewing him, pointed out my chucks. And you can even see in the interview that I had no idea what he meant at first. Uh, it turns out what he meant were these. <laughs> you can wear any trainer of really any colour, but I've decided to go for the normal white converse. Again, I think it works as the suit is so out there, it needs something to drag it back down. Like for example, the one they use in the promotional material as well as in one of the trailers is the Fifth Doctor variant of the Time Lord guy. And the coat is completely different as uh, you'll be seeing on screen, but it's still got that very obvious Fifth Doctor jumper. So, you know, that's kind of my version with the, uh, with the shirt and Converse combo. Now, of course, you could always stop there. You've basically got it down packed, but I want to add one last little thing to get the full 10 Time Lord guide in full effect. And that is, of course, the 10th Doctor's famous long trench coat, which I do have, but again, we're not going for screen accuracy here. We're going for the vague idea of the 10th Doctor. So my girlfriend actually has this brownish sort of cream jacket here, which I think will work a treat. As it's a woman's coat, the, you, know, you know how the arm sizes are usually quite different? There we go. And it sort of looks like what the 10th Doctor would look like in The Sims. And there we have it. This is my version of a 10th Doctor Time Lord guide. I don't actually know if they have a 10 Time Lord guide in Time Fracture at the minute. 
I don't have a picture of all of these, but I'm going to tell you which ones I've seen personally, just so you can go and find them. I have seen a 5, I have seen a 4, I have seen a Rowan Atkinson, and I've seen a 7, and I believe I've seen an 11, but it could have been a 2. It's kind of hard to tell. So go and find them, and if you see any more, leave it in the comments below, because I want to see if they have a 10. On the tracks of, like, the kids playing with the Sonic and, and all those little funny moments, one thing I've come to understand is, as an actor, it's all about making... Uh, uh, just the guests day in their own special way. Yeah. There has got to be some ridiculous either behind the scenes stories of like <laughs> rapid changing in costume or interesting guest stories where they're like either too into it or they're not into <laughs> it enough. So tell me what's what's some favorite story? I can see the smiles growing. What can we say? You're still being kind of, of course. course. No, absolutely. I can definitely think of um, this one happened quite recently and was just glorious where I was full on serenaded with a song by Enrique Iglesias, like sort of, um, I will be your hero baby. <laughs> and like, so this was to the queen. And he was like, I am a master singer and songwriter. And here is a song of my people from Enrique Iglesias. From and my people. Yeah, it was this, it was, yeah he, he was endowed as a lord of such a land. And blah, blah, blah. So he really got into this part and was just fully committed. Well, did the queen like it? Oh, very much. Oh, it? yes, I loved it. He kept his head. Every time we get close to the spoiler thing, I'm not going to say what it is, but there's something on the left side of me, not Jess, <laughs> there's something on the far left that I'm so worried is just going to inch closer to me. You two know. You can't, yeah. well, we can't say. Can <laughs> exactly. It's, it's usually one of these or a <laughs> isn't it? Did you get attacked, Mark? I've only been here once. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the spoiler. I think I am going to have to run this through PR. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite story is we were doing a show and uh, I will try not to spoil it, but I was in Act 1, I was in Unit. And because of what happened, the scientists went into Act 2 oh, yeah. and went into Act 3 and followed a lot of the audience through the show and yeah. it was lovely. Mm. We were a bit understaffed but it meant that we had more people and more fun and more people to talk to and I mean we had a way at a time. Yeah, uh, we felt a bit like naughty school children, <laughs> but uh, it was, yeah, that was really good fun. It's when the unit scientists managed to make their way through the time fracture into the rest of the show. When the audience <laughs> went through the time fracture, spoilers. Um, I think that's a given. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, some of the three scientists went with them. I was a time guide at that point, which was amazing, because then we sort of had these handovers of audience members that the scientists had been with over to me, and you can just really play some beautiful parts. There was this girl, her name was Beth, which was amazing. I was like, Beth! Nice. We both had pigtails, and we were like, mate, oh, I've just been exploring. I've come from Queen Elizabeth's court, and she went, oh, pulls up her shirt and she's got like all the Tudor kings and queens and Queen Elizabeth and I was like, I know where I'm taking you. <laughs> and because you know the timings of this show like that, came straight into Queen Elizabeth's court as the queen is coming out. So she's presented and we get messages from each other from backstage. So we kind of, we know who to look for maybe or to have these moments with people. Mm. And Charlie who was take playing the queen had had this note about Beth. So I was able to address this small girl uh, with her name excellent. and have this little moment. And this girl was just, and was curtsying. It was the sweetest thing in the world. <laughs> For some reason, people come into my room as Shakespeare. They come into my room with a lot of, a lot of like their personal research that they've done. And occasionally there'll be some, there'll be some very sort of this lovely silver head woman and a pashmina who knows a lot about Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> and I was ushering some people out of my room and she turned around and confronted me quite gleefully. It was like, so what was it like when you got done for poaching? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, what was it like? I, I, don't, I didn't. I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know. I was just like. I was just a bit. A bit then, I, yeah. Then I started improvising and being upset about it, being annoyed that I've been caught with a trout down my britches. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, Swiveling her wine. <laughs> yes. You're in trouble now, actor. I do get, I do get a lot of wine swivelers. So it's really it's true. There's a very imperious attitude that happens. Like real, uh, it's a real season ticket to Stratford type. Well, if I can come around tonight, I'm going to try and hunt you down and just and just. I'm going to Google some Shakespeare facts. You won't. You won't find. Me tonight. I'm uh, I'm so, I'm cyber mad tonight. Ah, <laughs> so I, I, darn. I will find you. It's gonna be Did tricky. You see of someone in the show tonight just yelling Shakespeare trivia at a cyberman. <laughs> 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 to be or what? One of my favourite things to ask is Brian, who obviously, for those that know the character, will know that he kind of relishes his role as an assassin. And one of my favourite things to do is to ask my group, what are your preferred methods of assassination? And quite often they'll say, you know, oh, blaster or <laughs> dagger or something like that. There was one child who was. Probably too small for me to be even asking this question now that I think about it. But the, this can't have been older than seven. Came out with the most violent 
terrifying, <laughs> genuinely bone-chilling method of assassination I've ever heard. And even I, as Brian, was genuinely terrified. And I said to, you know, the grown-up that this person was with, I said, excuse me, is this your son? Said, yes, yes, congratulations. <laughs> your, your progeny is quite the fledgling psychopath. I imagine you are very proud and his teachers are very worried. And I have never forgotten it since. It will haunt me until the day I die. It was involved... You, this might not even go on the channel. You're yeah. going to have to do a lot of bleeping we'll here. We'll see. But it was to do with making them drink <laughs> to the point where they would <laughs> all over their clothes and also on the floor. You then <laughs> and then the <laughs> and then on the <laughs> and they basically <laughs> the floor. Doctor well Who, Brian, audience member, you have successfully traumatised me. All the respect in the world to you. <laughs> Imagine if he does watch that and he just comments like. Good. <laughs> yeah. In Act Two, there used to be a real life stream of London with water, a real life stream going through the whole act. Wow. And because it wasn't very fast moving water, mm. when I say not very fast moving, it was hardly moving, <laughs> it looked like perspex. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so a friend of mine came to see it and she was, um, she'd been given a task in Act Two to sing a song to a member of royalty. And yeah. she jumped up onto what she thought was Perspex, but jumped into the stream. <laughs> and then realised that it was water, and then was just like, sod it. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> and we went singing into singing in the rain. In the rain. Yeah, I was like, brilliant. wow, oh, no. of course it was you. We do have a very fun kind of intercast game called uh, Odds On, or What Are The Odds? Is that like bingo? Kind of. So I would say to you something like, right, we're about to have an audience come in. What are the odds you do it in a different accent? Uh -huh. Right. Now, obviously, we're never going to do anything that's going to ruin the show, ruin the enjoyment. That's the rule. That's the rule. It has to just be a bit of fun. So probably a different accent might be a bit too far. But it might be like, what's the odds that you try and pretend that you can't get into your desk drawer or something and you make a big thing out of it? And I would say something like, okay, the odds are 10, 10 to 1. And we would have to pick a number between 1 and 10. So would you count and if we get the same number, we have to do it. Yeah. One of the cast members lost odds on the other day, Harry, and he had to say strawberry trifle somewhere within a very pomp... Pop, 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 as a pop, Time Lord. Yeah, and yeah, his content time... goes nowhere near Strawberry Trifle. <laughs> no. But somehow he well. it It was very, yeah. very well. Yeah. yeah. You're turning yeah. the universe into a Strawberry Trifle! <laughs> In the last episode, I gave you four images, these four that are on screen currently, and I asked you to do whatever you wanted with them. You could recreate them, you could edit them, and you sure did. I got Gemma. Hi, Gemma. Hola. I've seen them all, you have not seen any of them, so this would be quite funny to go through. So look away as I get the first one up. Now there's a man called Lord Matt Mills who did about four different edits. Okay. So here's the first one. That's pretty good. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. You think you were there? It's like a little tiny hair bit. Yeah, the hair is really tricky wow. to edit too. So that's very impressive. Now the next one. Uh, next one is a bit different. <laughs> That's, that's, um, what do you think about that, Jim? I look like Peter Griffin if he was bald. Bear in mind, I wasn't wearing those glasses in the picture. I wasn't, wear, I wasn't wearing any glasses in the original picture. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Well, that's, that's not you. How? That's someone else. I mean, that's my body. Yeah, but that's someone else's head on your body. Next. <laughs> what the f I mean, that's the Windows, um, <laughs> Windows background. I want that as my background. <laughs> I'm deeply concerned. I'm so confused. That's my favorite picture of you. Which one? Well, the one that's like three of them. Oh, really? Yeah, generally. It's my favorite picture of you. That's the other one he made. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm in the Maybe. 11th Doctor's TARDIS. I think that's his console in the background there. So again, he's very good at cutting them out and, and impressed. sticking them to I'm other impressed. things. He's who got am, some time. Who do you think I'm calling there? Um, for Russell help. <laughs> Russell T. <laughs> Have you got 14 yet? I think I'm in for a shot. The next one is made by a man called Alexander. And here it is. Ooh. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm regenerating. Disturbed. I'm look, look, look at the texture though. Wow. Look at that. It's almost like it's been painted. It does. I am the Mona Lisa. Ooh. That is very, that is artistic. Very different. Very different. Not what I thought. I'm just no. going to come back. That's the fun part. I know. And the next one, turn away. Okay. The next one is made by Dalius. Turn back. Um, another Ooh. regeneration one. They just don't like you. They really don't. They're like, <laughs> we need to make him anyone else. <laughs> we love you, Jack, but like, anyone else. Good stuff, Dalius. Thanks, mate. <laughs> There's that from oh. Gary the Word. Oh, it's the way you're looking. 
Now, note the oh, famous what? catchphrase of the Absorbaloff. Tastes like chicken. Tastes like chicken. Tastes like chicken. Do you remember who played the Absorbaloff? Um, what's his name? The comedian. Peter K. Peter K. Well remembered. Yeah, why? Look at me going. You're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> this should have been Alia's face. Oh, okay. Because of City of the Darlings. Yeah, of course, of course. That, oh. that is by Josh. That is good. That is so good. That cute. is custom. That is you. And like, that's my, that's my old wardrobe. They got the colour of the wall oh right. God. That's the bed, that, that's the side of the bed that's also in frame. How'd they do that? I don't know. I'm, I'm very... there's impressed. some kind of, like... Well, that's, um... Not system. What's program? Yeah, that's Yeah, cool. that's really cool. That is pretty cool. It makes me want one. And the, the like, the... It's going to be asking you for a custom one now. I will be. Do it. Or else. Next one by Pear Crazy is, um... <laughs> Is certainly an attempt to 2020 question mark. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm glad he didn't put 2022 because that is, that makes it assume I've died. This is Hartnell, I guess, <laughs> which makes that Pertwee and this Troughton. 100 percent. 100 percent. I mean, you've used all of the pictures. It's perfect. Also, I love the, the, the it's just scribbled out doctors and just says Jacks in all lowercase. It's perfect. <laughs> so, and the Jack Reeve years. I think you can barely see years. I think that's the last one. Yeah, that's the last it's one. It's perfect. Which which do you think is your favourite? There's all of them I there. I can't give a favourite. You have to pick a favourite. Mm. I'll pick a favourite. Josh, mm. the Lego one. Oh, I really like that. That one. is excellent. Although Alexander's was really cool. Because oh, yeah. of the painterly yeah, bit. Yeah, I did like that. I did like the first one. Oh, the me and the, the TARDIS. cut it all out. Yeah, I was very impressed around the hair. I'm impressed with that. And I never want to see bald me ever no. again. If I see it again, I will shoot years, it. In guys, in a few Stop it! I've already got a receding hairline. Thanks, family jeans. Next segment, please. <laughs> It's time for me to set you a new challenge. <laughs> I love a challenge. You may be wondering, why am I still in the Time Lord Guide get-up? Well, that's because it's your challenge. I would like you to do essentially a closet cosplay of a Time Lord Guide. So picking any of the Doctors, whether it be one of the numbered ones, one of the timeless ones, like the War Doctor or the Fugitive, but I know a lot of you are avid cosplayers already. You probably have a lot of the screen accurate stuff. So I am limiting you to one screen accurate piece. So for example, my Time Lord guide, there's nothing really up here that's fully screen accurate except for the chucks. So, to reiterate, you must create a Time Lord Guide costume, and if you are already a cosplayer, you must only use one screen-accurate piece of clothing. I'll be going through all the submissions in the next episode of The Community Show, which will be a cosplay-centred episode. But you'll be hearing more about that soon. Get to work, guys! I look forward to seeing your submissions. Bye-bye. Well, thank you so much for coming. Pleasure. I mean, you're here to work anyway. I'm just barging in. It's nice to come to work early. It gets me, yeah, sort of, it gets me out of having to walk the dog. It's nice. <laughs> that's fair. Well, I do have a little gift for you, actually. Oh, that's what the bag is for. Oh, oh, my, oh. Good, oh my goodness. You're an absolute superstar. There thank you, you so that's much. So sweet. Thank you. Oh, I forgot to fill the other two. Which is very good because our show is absolutely loaded with Easter eggs. <laughs> Can't wait for you to see the show again. Yeah. Oh, I'm very excited. Play around. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I will. Come like annoy us and try and make try and put us off. Oh. If you see these actors, reminder, Jess Simon. <laughs> <laughs> just go up to them and call them their real names. Really throw them for a loop. <laughs> and see. Don't forget to like and subscribe. No. Thank you so much. Like, share, and subscribe, you bunch of Huns. Yes! Just doing it now, sir! <laughs> Hello, a viewing audience. I am... Well, I suppose you don't really need to know that, but... As you've been, unfortunately, watching, Jack Reeves, as you know him, uh, came to our base of operations and encountered... a Dalek. There's no point in dancing around what you've all seen. You see, we invited him to take part in Operation Time Fracture like many others in the past, but unlike everyone else, this individual appears to be an idiot. He actually arrived a day early, um, so a few other experiments were taking place, no one else was on site, so he just sort of somehow waltzed into this top secret organization that we run and encountered that Dalek. He was a silly old soul. 
Oh, he's not dead, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, I should have mentioned. He's completely fine, as far as we know. But here's why I'm speaking to you. From the security footage that wasn't exterminated, thanks Dalek, we appear to have seen him run from the site in quite a hurry, I might add. So with that being said, Unit HQ is putting a bounty on the head of Jack Reeves. We believe he has vital information about the time fracture that for whatever reason he is not sharing with us. And the fact that he encountered this Dalek inside Unit HQ and isn't dead. It seems to point to him being in leagues with the Daleks, possibly Davros too. You may understandably think this is a ludicrous thing to do, but think about it. He encountered the Dalek and did not die. He has spoken to multiple people in the Time Fracture team, gathering all this insider information. 30 people might see him. Terrified Daleks, terrified weeping angels. Yes, Sullivan, Brian. This one happened quite recently and was just glorious. Captain Stephen Davis kind of after his office has been split in two by the Time Fracture. The modules that can slot into these beautiful things that I've prearranged. And as far as we can see, is now on the run. Now, I may not have a criminal psychology degree, I'm merely the HR representative for Unit HQ, hence why, again, unfortunately, you saw me speaking to all those previous Time Fracture operatives. I was trying to see if anyone else had any of the insider information. Can you hear me? Look, that's not the point. The whole reason you're seeing this at all is because of this bounty. If any of this information about Operation Time Fracture gets out, any of these spoilers, as people dub them, there is a tear in time and space. We have managed to contain it as best we can, but say any more Daleks get in, Cybermen, Ood, for some reason, Pigmen! What? Stay on track, stay on track, you're fine, you're fine. If you have any information about this Jack Reeves character, if you see him at all, you need to get in touch. Here is my work email, a very real email, and I will be replying to any messages I receive. If you capture any footage, any images, any whatevers with this Jack Reeves, I need to know. We need to track him down and bring him in before he can go into hiding. Brigadier Courtney has theorized with his previous activity on this here YouTube channel that he will assume a new identity with some sort of silly voice, silly character, maybe a silly pair of glasses, I don't know, and will hide. You mean you're walking by? I know! And if he does this before we find him, we may never find him. So, I repeat, if you have any information, if you see this character, email here. say operation time fracture is still going strong but we need more operatives if you would like to come to unit hq and help us with operation time fracture a link to our website is in the description and especially if you've come before you will have the experience you will help to crack down on this fracture and maybe one day we can finally close the damn thing we know that there are some amazingly talented people out there we need your help this has been unit hq Signing off. Good luck.